Allow me to preface all of this with saying, yes, I am a shitlord. No, this video is not in my defense. I'm not creating an argument for myself and my recent two-month transition to trying to do some commentary slash rant type videos. I know I'm a shitlord paperclip, but it's fun to do. So go fuck yourself. But also, there are fireworks um, as well as people driving by quite frequently outside of my house. It's pretty late at night, and it's the 4th of July weekend, so please be aware of that and you might hear a bit of that in the background audio. I don't have a soundproof room. So we all know that commentary channels are prone to receiving massive amounts of hate. Some would even call it cancerous, which is moronic because to draw comparisons between malign tumors and individuals speaking into a mic is nonsensical to say the least. But Scout, we're not referencing that definition of cancer. We're talking about any evil condition or thing that spreads destructively, like a blight. So you really mean to tell me that you're comparing a person a living, breathing, sentient human being to a highly destructive blight? Granted, I can see the facetious value in that, but I'm sorry to say that's a bit of a stretch for me. Tangent aside, we don't commonly focus on the positive aspects of commentary channels. Certainly, we see a lot of criticism aimed at channels such as Pyrocynical, Leafy, and Nefuckers, channels that ultimately point out people that are admittedly on the socially less acceptable side in a jesting manner. More often than not, we view these videos as attacks on the individual in question, and despite the disclaimers provided by said commentary channels, including the three public figures I've mentioned so far, there doesn't seem to be much in the way of understanding critique for the sake of entertainment. In this video, I want to discuss why commentary channels are actually beneficial to the development of YouTube in comparison to its stereotypical place on this website. <laughs> Let's face it, there's a dark side of YouTube, a side that nobody intentionally goes on to, or at least they used to avoid it anyway, but we'll get to that later. A side that is much darker than our YouTube overlords want to admit. Of course, I'm talking about the aptly named weird side of YouTube. The weird side of YouTube is typically the focus of commentary channels, and understandably so. From cringy vlogs to, well, some very creative content, for lack of a better word, there's a lot of interesting footage that can have the light shed upon it. And what better source for that than the commentary channel specifically catered to finding and discussing these videos? But Scout, why do these cringe-centric commentary channels deserve to call out these cringy videos? I'm glad you fucking asked, it's quite simple. Satire, the use of humor, irony, exaggeration, or ridicule to expose and criticize people's stupidity or vices, particularly in the context of contemporary politics and other topical issues. So, satire. It's not telling a weird YouTuber that he's shit or cancer or that he should kill himself. However, it's important to note that you can find a weird YouTuber's content to be shit and be vocal about that content being shit on a public platform. Just look at the YouTube's comments section. <laughs> the only difference between the fine folks who waste their time posting critical comments and the people posting videos about it are the videos are more creative and typically better worded. One more time, Weird YouTuber that spends time kicking shit because why the fuck? Not shit. His content? Utter trash that is only successful with set fetish and niche audiences. That's just my opinion, of course. And honestly, what the fuck am I doing wrong that he's more popular than me? Regardless, back on topic, that being my opinion is entirely the point we should focus on. Opinions are fucking beautiful things, and while I'll be the first to admit sometimes a public figure voicing his opinion on a topic can and sometimes will be harmful to the parties or party involved, we can we really ostracize or invalidate their voice due to a single slip-up? It seems a little overly aggressive to say, He thought this person's fetish for roller coasters was disgusting! What an incorrect dickhead for insulting coaster Ken! Like, I get it. I'm all for people fucking roller coasters, I guess. But if you want my opinion on the situation, I'm going to say it's a little fucked up. And I don't honestly feel like I'd be the only one. Now clearly, that's an overstatement. Nobody was up in arms over H3H3 calling the chick who liked to fuck roller coasters out. In fact, the best point of reference for this scenario would be Leafy is here making fun of Tommy NC2010. A ton, and I mean a ton, of people were calling for Leafy to leave his channel over this. And while I do think it was out of bounds for him, and he should definitely have done more homework before he made fun of an autistic person, I firmly believe that his apology was sincere and that we should collectively let it go. Now before you jump down my throat over this, I want you to chill the fuck out. This is an opinion. It's going to piss people off. That's kind of the point. I actually didn't want to reference it because I feel like we should let it go, but it's like tiptoeing around the elephant in the room. It's just bullshit. I wouldn't 
want to have to account for this in a rebuttal, saying, oh, you missed this point. Well, go fuck yourself. I tried not to. To summarize, what I'm trying to say here, your favorite content creators are people. They're going to fuck up. If it's a satire-based commentary channel, that's twice as likely to happen because these people go out of their way to find shit normal people would say what the fuck to and then make light of it. So why is it okay for them to have opinions and not me? Oh, I'm not saying that by any means. If you think Nefuckers is a shitty Russian pig who stutters over every five seconds, then by all means be vocal about it. Personally, I'm impressed with his mastery of the English language as a second fucking language, and even more so that he's gained such a, a substantial American presence all the way from Russia. Really, bro, keep it up. That's, that's really good shit. I'm just specifically saying that these people that you're calling the malign tumors of YouTube are holding up a mirror on this darker, weirder side of YouTube that we honestly need to see, especially if seeing it brings about discussion, either negative or positive. <laughs> So in the last segment, I mentioned that being vocal about your opinions was okay, and I'm sure that's going to bring to mind several questions, such as, Then why are you arguing for the existence of commentary channels? At what point did you say this was a necessary argument? Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? And all of these are good questions in their own right. I'm arguing for the existence of commentary channels because I personally see loads of negativity surrounding these public figures that's never actually diffused. It just stagnates and becomes a horrid cesspool of resentment. To summarize, I've wanted people to just let it go for some time now. I realize the odds of that are slim to none, but I got hit by the passion bug, so I was going to write about this no matter what. My logic was, might as well make this publicly available in case someone sees this, and if they feel strongly, or if they, if they realize that they feel strongly about it, then all the better. And if they want to talk about it, that's even better. And my aim wasn't to provide a resolution either. I want you, the viewer, to think about what commentary channels mean developmentally and consider what YouTube could potentially go from here with commentary channels thriving. Will we actually move towards this more podcast slash storytelling type of content that we see from YouTubers such as Luna, The Needle Drop, uh, uh, Leafy is here? Or do you think that we may ultimately fall flat as YouTubers or YouTube in general, attempts to rebound to the Let's Play community. Keep in mind that YouTube has recently changed up their terms of service to reflect that online critique cannot come from a hostile place, and we have yet to see how that will develop and that most applicable channels are forming an argument for their content being satirical in nature. And on that note, I'm going to leave you to think about it, because that's the point of this. It's the point of this entire video, is I want you to think about this. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. By all means, I would really appreciate that as well. If you enjoyed this video or you want to support me, the best way to do that would be to like, comment, subscribe, and or share me with friends who might enjoy my content as well. I would appreciate it greatly. Regardless, I hope you all have an excellent day, or night, or 4th of July, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. I did my job.